everybody, welcome back to Furniture Flipping Teacher. I'm Lauren and in this video we are going to be recapping the 12 days of Flipmas. If you're new here and you're not sure what the 12 days of Flipmas is, is in December I flipped for 12 days out of that month and I was able to flip 11 pieces. So we're going to be going over the process and the profits of these pieces. Let's get into it. On the first day of Flipmas, I took this dresser that I found at Goodwill for $20 and decided to transform it. Whenever I can get such a low buy-in, I know there's opportunity for high profits. I removed the hardware and gave the piece a good clean with some simple green. This is a really important step so that you're getting all that dust and grease off of the surface. Next, I took my surf prep sander and sanded everything down with a 120 grit. I sanded the front section all the way down to raw wood, and then I took my Bondo and repaired some of the drawers that had major gouges in the corners. The Bondo will hold up really well over time and is definitely my go-to wood filler. Next, I took Bin Shellac Base Primer to block any bleed through that may occur when I painted the dresser. I sanded everything smooth with my Surf Prep Sponge Abrasive Pad and I used up paint in the color Pale Ivory to coat the body of the dresser and the drawers. I polished up the existing hardware with Brasso and then gave the dresser one more coat of paint. Finished off the piece by adding a lemon scented furniture salve for protection across the paint and the raw wood areas. I also used the salve to butter up the slides so that the drawers would slide smoothly in and out of the piece.
After getting this piece for just $20 at Goodwill and spending only $30 on the materials, that means I'm only $50 into this project. And it's really key to try and stay as low as possible on your upfront costs, including the furniture and the materials when you're trying to make money by flipping furniture. So I have this piece listed for $500 on Facebook Marketplace and it's waiting to find its new home. On the second day of Flipmas, I tackled this really neat curved dresser that I got for $100 at the thrift store. I got started by removing the hardware and cleaning with Dixie Belle's White Lightning Cleaner, which is just a TSP-based cleaner that helps get all of that dirt and oil off of the surface. I made sure to label all of the drawers so I knew exactly where they went when I was gonna put them back in at the end. Don't forget to clean the inside of the piece of furniture as well because that is most important when you are trying to get a high quality piece of furniture. Next, I took my surf prep sander with an 80 grit and sanded my life away for about eight hours straight. I knew the look that I was going for on this dresser was to get rid of all that orange golden oak finish that is just not in style anymore. I knew it was gonna be a time consuming flip, but it was gonna be worth it in the end. After I got all of that golden oak finish off, I utilized a paint wash with the colors burlap and putty in Dixie Belle's chalk mineral line. I created a paint wash using 50% paint and 50% water. Then I brushed the paint wash on the surface and wiped it back with a lint-free cloth. I used Dixie Belle's satin clear coat to protect the full dresser and the drawers so that they would be able to hold up against time and wear and tear in the future. Then it was time to put the drawers back in and change out the old hardware. I couldn't find any of the hardware online that was the same size as the existing hardware. So I ended up finding this adjustable hardware that is really neat and it's on Amazon and you can basically put this in any whole size on any piece of furniture. I really think that the black handles popped really nicely against the raw wood dresser, and I loved the final result.
so after spending a hundred dollars on this piece of furniture and about 75 dollars in material cost i sold it for 595 dollars giving us a total profit of 420 dollars on day three of Flipmas, I got to flip one of my favorite types of furniture, which is a French provincial dresser. As always, I started by cleaning with some furniture prep from Lily Moon Paint and removing all of the original hardware. Again, don't forget to clean the inside of the piece of furniture. That is super important for a happy customer. I fixed some of the drawer slides with some glue because they had gotten busted over time, but it was a super easy fix. And then I got to work scuff sanding the entire surface. I used an 80 grit sandpaper on the top of the dresser because I wanted a stained wood look on the top. So I needed to remove that original finish. Then I took Lily Moon's Eclipse Primer, which blocks stains and tannins from popping through. And then I covered the entire dresser with Magnolia Garden. I used Lily Moon's Opulent line, which actually is an all-in-one paint, including the primer, the paint, and the top coat in one formula. It's also really great at self-leveling to give you a perfect finish, even when you're brushing on. Next, it was time to tackle the top and I used Lily Moon's Smoky Gel Stains to create a stained wood look. And then I layered two different colors to get this really pretty tan color. Then I top coated it. And here's the final result. I think that it turned out really nice and is a super timeless color that can belong in anyone's home. So after spending $100 on this French Provincial dresser from Facebook Marketplace and about $45 on materials, I sold it for $495, giving us a total profit of $350. Also, I figured this was a great time to tell you guys that I finally sold the Black Arch cabinet. I flipped it way back in September and sometimes you just got to wait for that right buyer to come along. This ended up selling for $1,000 off of Facebook Marketplace. So since it was a higher ticket item, it ended up costing or taking just a little bit more time to sell, but that right buyer came along and it's, it gave me a total profit of around $600 after purchasing the cabinet for $300 and investing about $100 in materials. That cost is not gonna be factored in at the end for the profits of these flips, but just wanted to give you guys a quick update. For day four of Flipmas, I flipped this Haywood Wakefield dresser. It has eight drawers and it was in pretty nasty shape, but I got it from an estate sale and it was worth the price because Haywood Wakefield is a really highly sought after brand and I knew it had great bones. It was solid wood. So I gave it a clean and I removed all the existing drawer pulls. And 
like I said, the finish was really bad and failing miserably, so I grabbed my surf prep sander and sanded the entire finish off with a 120 to an 80 grit sandpaper. This was able to give me a complete blank slate and able to start anew. Then I used Lily Moon's Eclipse Stain Blocking Primer and covered the entire surface. I wanted this piece to be super classy and timeless, so I ended up using Lily Moon's paint Starless Nights in the Opulent line to cover the entire surface. Again, this paint has primer and top coat and the paint all built in. The reason I used the Eclipse primer before this paint, even though it has the primer built in, is because the primer built into the paint is actually just a bonding primer and the Eclipse stain blocking was to help me make sure that no stains came through the finish in the end. To cover the entire surface, it took three coats because of the pigmentation of the darker color. And then I used the smoky gel stains to stain the wooden drawer handles and the feet of the dresser. Then I used some salve to freshen up the inside of the drawers, as well as the drawer slide so that everything would slide super nicely. reattached the wooden hardware, and then here's the final result. After spending $200 on this dresser at an estate sale and spending $45 on materials, I sold it for $495, giving us a profit of $250. And I just want to tell you guys that not every single flip has to be or is going to be a home run when it comes to profits. But if you're doing flips a lot, then the volume game might be the way to go if you maybe in your area, you don't think you can get such high ticket items. $250 is still a great profit on this flip. For day five of Flipmas, I got my hands on an Ikea Hemnes dresser, the one that has eight drawers. I paid only $60 for this off of Facebook Marketplace. And in my area, these things are a hot commodity and they literally never go on market, let alone this cheap and me able to snag it. So I was super excited and I had some awesome ideas for this piece. I removed the hardware and I got out my scrub brush attachment for this drill because this piece was absolutely filthy. It took a lot of elbow grease and I don't even know what was on the surface, but once I got all of that off, I was able to take the drawers out and label them all to give them a nice scuff sand so that the paint could really adhere well. Next, I had to fill some gouges with Bondo, and then I ended up going ahead and sanding the full top smooth because there were so many surface level and superficial scratches that I just wanted to start with a clean, smooth surface. I also went ahead and sanded the Bondo smooth and primed with Dixie Belle's Boss.
Next, I used this really cool new paint that I'm testing out for the future. And this paint was a chalk and clay based paint. So it was two in one type of paint and it was a little bit of texture, but it really evened out nicely, especially when I was using the Mr. Bottle to help even out some of those brush stroke marks. Then I took some painter's tape and graphed out some of the checker marks that I was going to do on the top drawers to give it a little bit of interest on the top. Then I went ahead and painted the checkerboard look with the white and it contrasted really well with the blue paint. I attached the new hardware on that I got on Amazon and here's the final result. I listed this piece on Facebook Marketplace and my best friend saw it immediately and she texted me saying, I need this piece in my room right now. What do I need to do? So she paid me uh, $495. So after getting 60 to, after getting the piece for $60 and spending about $25 in materials, selling it for $495, I made a total profit of $410 on that flip. For day six of Flipmas, I got this Art Deco dresser at an estate sale for only $40. Again, another great low buy-in. This one needed some love and definitely had seen better days since it was actually originally made in the 1940s. But I was up for the challenge, so I removed the hardware and gave it a really good clean. It was a much needed clean too. Next, I took my surf prep sander and the foam abrasive pads to scuff sand the entire surface. I was really, really careful because the veneer on this thing was really, really thin and I wanted to save some of the wood, so I had to be really careful. I did make a few repairs of the veneer on the bottom three drawers with the Bondo, and I taped off the areas that I didn't want to get paint on so that then I was ready to paint. I utilized the Real Milk Paint Co's color Arabian Nights Milk Paint for this project, and I did two coats.
I took some hemp oil to finish things off and give it a nice layer of protection. Last but not least, I took some soft wax to revitalize some of the wood, both on the inside of the drawers and the outside. Then I reassembled everything and listed it on Facebook Marketplace for $375. Since we have our furniture store now, this one actually sold in person by uh, someone coming into the store and checking things out. And so they ended up purchasing it for their son for $375. So I spent $40 on the dresser originally and about $25 in materials went into it. So that gives me a total profit of $310. On the seventh day of Flipmas, it was time for a commission piece. Sometimes these are some of my favorite pieces because they're designs that I most likely didn't think of myself, but the client brought these this piece to me and she is a dear customer of ours, Laura. She explained exactly what she wanted me to do with this piece, so I got to work. I had a little bit of tweaks throughout the process, but she was totally on board with all of them and I think in the end, our joint minds just Gave, it ended up in a really great end result. I started off by giving this piece a nice clean and, and flipping it over on its back to get rid of these little scalloped areas that she no longer wanted and kind of made it a little bit outdated. Then I spent some more time sanding and sanding and uh, I took the entire wood finish off of the top and the fronts of the two drawers on this piece. I primed the base of the dresser with Dixie Belle's Boss Primer and then I coated it in two coats of Dixie Belle's Drop Cloth Chalk Mineral Paint. I used my Mr. Bottle to help me get the really smooth finish. And then I did a paint wash with the drop cloth paint on the drawer fronts and the top of the dresser that I had sanded raw earlier. The paint wash really tones down that orangey wood tone and depending on how thick or how opaque you want your paint wash to be really depends on how much water you utilize. Typically, I do about a 50-50 ratio. Then I took Dixie Belle's satin clear coat over the whole thing, the painted parts and the paint washed wooden parts. And that is gonna protect the dresser for the long time to come. Mm -hmm. 
I took out the outdated hardware and then I replaced it with new hardware that I got at Hobby Lobby and then the piece was finished. Laura brought me the piece, so that was free to me, and then I spent about $40 in materials, including hardware and the paints, and then I sold it to her for $590, giving us a total profit of $550 on this commission piece. On the eighth day of Flipmas, I took this $50 table that I found on Facebook Marketplace and gave it a much needed facelift. I cleaned with Simple Green to get any grease and grime off of the surface, and then I used Bondo All-Purpose Putty to make a few repairs. I used Kills Primer over the entire surface, which is an oil-based primer that'll help block any stains that could cause bleed through. Then I used Reticket Liquid Wood Primer, which contains 60% wood fibers. Basically, you're painting on a layer of wood. I coated the entire table with two layers of this wooden primer. And then I used the pickled oak gel stain and wood greening tool to create a real wood look over the top of the wooden primer. I top coated it twice so that everything would hold up really well over time and then I reassembled it and here's the final result. The re it really 
really creates a true wood look and it's a super fun product to use and experiment with. This product would be great for things like laminate dressers that you want a wood look on and you just add that wooden primer, adding wood onto it and staining it as if you were staining true wood. I spent $50 on the table and then about $50 in materials and it's still listed for $400 on Facebook Marketplace. For Flipmas day nine and 10, I flipped this arched cabinet. And I will say that this is one of my all time favorite flips that I have ever done. And I will also say that it was more of a bucket list project for me than anything and i just really wanted to try something out like this first i removed all the glass out of the cabinet and i took the backs off and i went ahead and got rid of the mirrors sometimes the mirrors can really make a piece feel super heavy and outdated Next, I started constructing some shelves at the base of the cabinet. I utilized tools like my jigsaw, my circular saw, my Craig jig, and my drills to make this base come to life. Once I got the base all assembled with some red oak wood, I was finally able to attach it to the existing cabinet. Next, I cleaned the entire piece and gave it a good scuff sand with 120 grit sandpaper, making sure to really get into all of the nooks and crannies with that scuff sand so that I was sure that my paint would adhere. Then I took my Wagner Flexio 5000 and I put Dixie Bell's boss in it to prime the piece to make sure that we're just starting out with a really even surface.
Then I mixed the two colors caviar and collard greens chalk mineral paint into my Wagner sprayer and I did three coats over the entire cabinet. I laid it down inside of my Wagner spray tent just to try and mitigate any overspray that will occur. I top coated it with a satin clear coat and then I began to reassemble all of the glass. I reattached some of the new backer boards that I had stained with Lily Moon's gel stain and then I screwed in the bottom shelf. Like I said, this cabinet was a labor of love and it took a lot longer than I had anticipated it to take, but it was so much fun and very fulfilling for my creative soul. I spent a total of $90 on the cabinet itself on at an estate sale and then around $350 in material costs. So since I spent so much up front, I am listing it on Facebook Marketplace for $1,250 because I still want to make a profit. I've got the space to hold on to it until I get my right buyer to come along. Similarly to the black arch cabinet, which was one of my higher ticketed items. So we've still got the arch here in the shop and listed on Facebook Marketplace. And currently it is one of the most clicked on pieces of furniture on Facebook Marketplace that I have ever done. We're just waiting for someone to pull that trigger. For day 11 of Flipmas, I flipped these two matching nightstands. I cleaned with Dawn dish soap to get all that dirt and grime off of the surface. And then I started by deconstructing the existing feet to make the nightstands feel a little bit more modernized. Next, I sanded everything with 120 grit sandpaper and filled some of the water damaged areas with Bondo. sanded the Bondo down and then I primed everything with Kills Primer and a foam roller. I 
then I wanted to try a new technique on these nightstands. So I used some Venetian plaster by Uppaint. This was a really fun and new technique that I've never really seen happen on furniture before, but it was also very challenging to pull off correctly. If I were to give you some advice and you wanna try the Venetian plaster on a piece of furniture, make sure that you've got flat surfaces. My drawers were a little bit curved as well as some of the other parts of the nightstands. Um, all in all, I had to use my hands a couple of times to make sure I was getting that look really nailed down well. And I think it really came out well. Um, but just some tips in the future if you're gonna try this method. I used some red oak to create some little bases for each nightstand to elevate them off the ground since I had removed the existing feet. And then I reassembled everything and gave it some new hardware. So I posted this uh, set of nightstands on Facebook Marketplace for $350. So after spending $50 on the nightstands and about $40 in materials, these sold for the total of $350, giving us a total profit of $210. On the 12th day of Flipmas, I took this old blonde mid-century dresser and gave it a new life. First, I removed all of the hardware and cleaned the surface. Next, I made some repairs with my Bondo all-purpose putty to fill in any chipping veneer and some of the hardware holes. I sanded all the Bondo smooth and gave the full surface a scuff sand. I primed with Kills Stain Balking Primer and then I painted with Lily Moon Paints Dried Pompas and I brushed on two coats of that using my Mister Bottle in between brush strokes so that I would have a really even surface.
Next, I put on new hardware and I put the drawers back in and this is the final result. This piece ended up going to a local family who is just going through a little bit of a hard time. And we're just so grateful that we are able to help people in a time of need. Sometimes I don't think that, you know, giving away pieces of furniture really is doing anything for anyone, but the family was super grateful and this helped them. So being able to put my skill set and just having the opportunity to bless a family like this just made us really happy and grateful that we're in the position to be able to do so. So out of these 10 pieces that I flipped for profit, seven of them have sold and three of them are still on the market. So I just wanted to go over the numbers really quick. Out of those 10 pieces that I did for profit, we profited $2,500 and that is the net profit. So that's the money that we earned, not including the amount that we got back for like the sale or the um, original upfront cost, the material cost. That is after all expenses, $2,500 for seven out of the 10 pieces. So that means that we're gonna be bringing in more profit from the remaining three. And sometimes you just gotta wait a little bit longer for those profits to come in. If you've got the space, you've got the infrastructure to be able to hold on to some pieces a little bit longer. Um, I mean, a piece like this is gonna bring almost eight or $900 profit on top of that 2,500. So I did something once and then I'm gonna wait until I can benefit off of that profit once it sells and the right buyer comes along. Thanks everyone for watching. I hope that this gave you just a glimpse at what you can truly make off of flipping furniture. We are going to be making the most money we ever have this year and we want to invite you guys along to do the same. Let us know down below your goals, your aspirations when it comes to flipping furniture. How much are you looking to make? What's holding you back? How can we help you get over your fears or just get around the things that you have on your mind that are holding you back from getting started. All you've got to do is get started. Get that piece of furniture, start painting, no more excuses. Just get after it. Go out there and do it. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you on the flip side.